It's the January transfer window for this director of football and our two prize assets are wanted by, among others, Tottenham Hotspur, Chelsea and Manchester City. So will they go? How much will we get for them? And who will be their replacements? Greetings, my excellent friends, and welcome back to Club 2, part 10 of the Director of Moneyball. I'm Kirk Sheridan, and we sit in 10th place in the league. After 26 matches played, we're only two points off the playoffs. Salcedo is the man. He's our top goal scorer, he's got a highest average rating, and the most assists. Next up, we have Stockport in the FA Cup in eight days' time. Stockport are sitting 19th in League 2, so good opportunity for us to progress to the fourth round. And I must just show you this piece of news. After my concerns about Luke Harris's performances in the previous episode, he immediately went and won Young Player of the Month for the Championship. Scored five goals in five matches. One of those was a 10 out of 10 performance where he scored a hat-trick, and he scored two the following match. So he hasn't been amazingly consistent but it is making me rethink whether we keep him around. Club atmosphere because of this run that we've been on has just been outstanding. We've got a few unhappy players who want to go out on loan and Barmer is still unhappy from a year ago of me trying to move him on when we desperately needed some funds. But by and large, this group of players are in a very, very good frame of mind. You can see a few positive reaction notifications down the side here. That is because I am Stepping in as the director of football to praise players occasionally for training well done. We've got some absolutely outstanding training performances. And I feel as director of football, I should be stepping in as a senior manager and also praising the players. Not just relying on our assistant manager to do that for us. And that's obviously having a great impact on these team dynamics. But what about those transfers? Well, you won't be surprised. Ridian Bennett is one of them. He is wanted by Chelsea, Manchester City and Inter. And both Boateng is wanted by a whole host of clubs. So Brentford, Everton and Tottenham currently looking like his most likely destinations. And we need to sell. Firstly, it's a money ball save. We're looking to make the most of our prize assets and always be turning a profit. These are two players who came through our youth team and haven't cost a penny. So this will be pure profit. And considering we had £24 million in the bank in August, we're already down to 11.8. So we need to top up those funds. We're still losing a huge chunk of money every month. And now that we're spending on transfers, there's more incoming funds that are needed for the kitty. And would you believe it, the very next morning, we've got those offers from Boateng coming in. Brentford offering five and a half million up front with a whole host of add-ons and percentage of profit from the next sale. Well... I'm rejecting it, as Clates has taught me to do, because I want to drive that value up. I want to get more back into our transfer budget this year. So we will start offering him out repeatedly until we get those negotiable offers. We'll start with seven and a half million pounds and see what happens. How much? 10, 15 million pounds coming into the bank? I like it. And if you like it, please drop a like on the video. And of course, subscribe to the channel to keep following me on the journey. The Boateng auction begins. Look at this. We've had offers from Brentford, Burnley, Leeds, Southampton, Juve, Trabs on spot. This is absolutely ridiculous. These are offers now that I can start to negotiate, though, which is great. We'll see how high we can push them. Also, I'm letting Pedro Bicalio go out on loan, potentially with a look to a permanent transfer. He could become a good championship level player, but currently only good enough for League One. So seventh best midfielder at the club at the moment. There are just a lot of players ahead of him in the pecking order. Well, this is the best offer that we can secure for Benjamin Boateng. And it looks like we're becoming a Brentford feeder club. First Jordan James, now Benjamin Boateng. £11.5 million. Pounds. I'm going to ask for 20% uh, of the profit from the next sale. Done. If we're losing Boateng and Terziev already has a transfer arranged, might need just a look at getting another centre back in as well. It, it really is all kicking off. Man City are now in for Bennett. And their offer looks honestly pathetic. 1.6 million up front, a few instalments, some clauses based on appearances and goals. It, this just looks a bit rubbish, really. Once again, we reject. But let's see what we can get for him. 
Well, about 10.5 million quid is the answer. Chelsea have offered 10.5 million up front with a loan back until the end of the season, which is costing nothing. Not going to turn that one down. Juve and Man City, both 10 and a quarter with 15% of profit from the next sale. So it's really over to Bennett now to make that decision. Because we've got that loan back, I'm not as concerned about bringing a striker in to replace him this season, but... I've found Mohamed Darami, whose contract is running down in six months' time, played some football for Ajax and Copenhagen with potential to become a good Premier Division player. We've offered him a contract for the end of the season on a lot of money. I suspect we'll probably face some competition, though. Club captain Terziev has now departed. Just £50,000 that we're getting for him. He just wasn't getting any football. Almost ever present for us last year, but only three starts so far this season. Totally been usurped by the standard of player we've brought in over the summer and has gone back to play in Bulgaria. So thank you, Terziev. You've been a loyal servant. Got us through some really rocky times on the pitch. You'll be welcome back here anytime, that is for sure. So it's the 9th of January. We're getting a lot of early business done here. Pedro Bicalio is now moving to Swan on loan. No option for a future fee, but we're getting a monthly payment and 50% of his wages paid. So it's a good opportunity for him to build up some game time and improve his ability. And two other exciting transfers I want to show you. If and when Boateng goes, we've lined up David Nemeth as his replacement. He was transfer listed by Sociedad for 1.8 million, so we've been able to get him for 1.5 up front and 300k after 50 league matches. And he would be coming in as the best central defender at the club. Ahead of Bekema, ahead of Barmer, ahead of Boateng. This is Moneyball at its finest. Sell players for profit and bring in players cheaper who are better. Perfect. And the other is Felix Nemecha, who I went in for in the summer but couldn't convince to sign a contract. He is also transfer listed by request. Two million pounds, which I think is a steal considering he's on a nearly five year contract with his current club. He can play an attack in midfield. He can play up front as well. Long term Bennett replacement. Awesome. Just over 24 hours until we play Stockport in the FA Cup. And now that Terziev has left, we need to pick a new captain. I will, of course, default to Thomas Lecce's opinion here. And he is going for Sam Bekema. Only joined us in the summer. Has played 19 matches for us in the league. 6.94 average rating. The obvious choice as the team leader. He is the best defender currently at the club. Welcome to your new leadership role, Sam. And Sam did help us to a victory in the FA Cup, but only just. We needed a 90th minute winner from Jack Hinshelwood. Looking at those match stats, though, we were by far the better team. Stockport had a resilient defensive performance, keeping us out for a long period of time. But we got there in the end. Irahon picked the ball up deep for the first goal. And Welsh, oh my word, Welsh just nicked the ball off of the defender in the box. That is a quality finish for a central defender. And oh my word, terrible goalkeeping, terrible clearance from Welsh there. And terrible goalkeeping again for Stockport's first and only goal. That is a, another reason to be concerned about Garcia. But Hinshelwood with a corner in the 90th minute, quality. Definitely do need to be thinking about that goalkeeping position for next season though. And the morning after that victory over Stockport to send us into the fourth round of the FA Cup, Benjamin Boateng waves goodbye. He is joining Brentford in the Premier League. We're getting £11.5 million straight up and the board are adding nearly £5 million quid to our transfer budget. Amazing! And not even a couple of hours later, Nemecha is set to sign. He's accepted his contract offer. I think that will make him the highest paid player at the club but I think his quality makes him well worth it. We've got a five and a quarter million pound transfer budget available right now. He's going to cost two up front. Again, excellent money balling. Nemeth is also about to join. We've put an application in for his work permit. And we've also now got the chance to cash in on Jude Bellingham's sell-on clause. If we choose to sell the clause, we will receive £10.86 million. And to be honest... I don't think it's worth it. He's currently valued up to £130 million. We get 25% of the profit on his next transfer. Sadly, the interest in him has faded away once again. So again, 
being tricked by all of those transfer rumours, but he's under contract until 2030. I find it very hard to believe that he's not going to move on before then, but a substantial chunk of money. So we've got plenty of money coming in now. We don't need that 10 million quid immediately. Let's hold off to get a much higher value further down the line. And on the 14th of January, just a couple of days later, Ridian Bennett has agreed terms with Manchester City. We get a loan back for the rest of the season, 10 and a quarter million pounds in the bank and 15% of the profit from his next sale. So that's another four million quid going into the transfer kitty. I love being the director of Moneyball. And the very next day, Nemeth is in as well. So we've sold Boateng and replaced him with Nemeth. We've sold Bennett and replaced him with Nemecha. And it's only the 15th of January. So we are pretty much done. Nemeth here could be a perfect replacement for Boateng, according to the fans. Once again, director of Moneyball excellence. Let's take a look at this squad depth. I genuinely do think we are stronger now than we were at the start of the transfer window. Garcia, first choice goalkeeper with a decent backup. We've got six great options at centre-back and spot that Nemeth is already valued up to £7.4 million. <laughs> He's cost us one and a half. Couple of options at right wing back. Maybe a better backup required for Brian Reynolds in the near future. Good options at left wing back. Four solid choices in defensive midfield. A huge array of options up front now. We have potentially blocked off Mark Francis' route to the first team. That's the only thing because I, I hadn't noticed I'm not able to actually send any of these loanees back. We agreed that we couldn't terminate the loan when we brought them in. Little did I know how successful my other transfer business would be, so that's a lesson learned for next season. And then obviously Salcedo, Bennett, van der Heiden, Plange up front, and Nemecha can play there as well. So our squad is looking great for the remainder of the season. Next up, we have Reading away as our first test. Reading are favourites, but we're actually in better form than they are. They're currently 7th, obviously. We're 10th. We could go above them if we win, but they have won four of their last five home matches. So this is going to be an interesting test to see who Thomas Lech picks out of that new look squad, which of the new guys are going to make their starts, and how are we going to perform against another team that is currently challenging for the playoffs? Are we in the mix? We're about to find out. Both Borden fans are expecting a draw. If there was a winner, they think it will be Reading. But equally, they hope to see us move into the playoff places, which obviously requires us to win. So all of the options are on the table. We need every other team ahead of us to slip up if we are going to make it into those playoff places. So don't expect that to happen. But if anyone can do it, it's Thomas Lech. And if any squad can do it, it's this one that's been possibly masterfully put together by your very own director of football. I really am quite pleased with the business so far. Let's go take on Reading and see what this team can do. So we've got Garcia in goal. Nemeth is starting alongside Welsh and Bekema at the back. We've got Fleming and Reynolds at wing back. Irahon and Gubua in midfield with Nemecha starting as well alongside Salcedo and Bennett. Wow, this is a strong team. 90 minutes against the team in seventh place. What can we do? It's a slow start, 10 minutes in, not really much being created. Two shots from Reading. We have yet to generate an opportunity. Right, Welsh plays it up to Reynolds, who knocks it down to Gubua. Plays it to Reynolds again, to Gubua. Is he going to thread a through ball? No, it goes back to Bekema, who plays it back to Nemeth. We're taking our time here to build up patiently, looking for that opening. Irahon to Salcedo. Welsh with the ball, runs forward. Irahon and plays a through ball to Fleming. He's in. And Bennett. Oh, Bennett charges forward and puts the header over the bar. That was a quality opportunity that we crafted there. Good opening. Can we do it again? That might be the only opportunity of the first half for us. Oh dear, Reading have got a corner right at the death. And oh my word, Garcia, what are you doing? I cannot help but think Garcia is not our long-term goalkeeper. That feels like another time when he should have made a much better effort to save that. Maybe some loose defending on our part, but it's only 1-0 at half-time and we have an attack at the start of the second half. The ball bowls up for Nemecha and Salcedo knocks it past the post. Oh, that was a very favourable deflection for us. And I really would have appreciated Salcedo to do more there. But Reading are pushing forward and, oh, 
Garcia did manage to actually pick that one up. I was thinking he might actually bring down the attacker there. Lofted ball up front. Over the top of the uh, Reading defence, but we can't get on the end of it. Nemecha is looking to break from that attacking midfield spot, though. He is really putting himself into a position to cause all sorts of problems. We cut the ball out. Irahon plays it to Salcedo, to Fleming. Fleming, is he going to run down the wing? No, he plays it back to Welsh, to Irahon, back to Welsh, to Fleming, who plays a through ball, can't quite reach Salcedo. Irahon, though, to Salcedo. Bennett is definitely offside. We now have a higher XG than Reading, which is fantastic. I want us to be doing more with this, though. Come on. Hinshelwood is now on. Hinshelwood, who saved us, obviously, in the last match. Oh, and again, the ball just doesn't stick to the feet of the Birmingham City players. We let Reading get on the ball and push forward when we were in a decent position. Fleming looks like he's picked up an injury there. And, oh, my word! <laughs> that was nearly an own goal from Jack Hinshelwood. This is a stressful time. Reading with the corner. Are they going to get another one hit? No, we managed to clear it away. That's good. That's good. But they're going to create after another opportunity. I can't help but think this is going to be another goal for them. Oh my word, what a quality, quality tackle from Reynolds. But we can't manage to get the ball up to the other end. We're playing a bit cautiously here, considering we are 1-0 down. We're not throwing many people forward to get into goal-scoring positions. That would have been a great opportunity for a counter-attack. And we really didn't seize it. We're allowing Reading to just keep hold of the ball, play around us quite comfortably. We can't get the ball through to Salcedo again. Reading are just sitting here, not giving us any space to play into. And Perkins has been let clean through. What is that goalkeeping? Shocking defending, shocking goalkeeping. That was a defensive calamity. Oh, I cannot believe what I have just seen. The ball just over the top. Perkins on his own. Garcia, I don't know what he was doing. Just couldn't decide whether to try to make the stop, to, to block the shot. Nothing happened. And that is a terrible way to end this match. We were in with a really great chance. Thomas Letch has gone for a 4-2-3-1 to create more up front, but we're not able to create any chances that is such a disappointing way to end that match our xg was on top for so long as well oh such a shame but it's reading who move into promotion contention not us not a single player covered themselves in glory there except potentially Jack Hinshelwood who's the off the bench the only player to get a 7 rating. Well it's that kind of result that proves we still have a lot of work to do but don't forget the board were only expecting us to avoid relegation this season. We're 5 points off the playoffs after 27 matches played. We are 20 points clear of the relegation zone so there's no chance we're going down this year. We've just improved the squad and we've still got nearly two weeks of the transfer window left so we'll be back on deadline day just for any final shenanigans who knows what could happen and then a fascinating away match at Everton in the fourth round of the FA Cup and that's an Everton team who are currently 19th in the Premier League could this be an FA Cup upset coming up well you're gonna have to join me next time to find out I hope you've enjoyed what you watched today if you have please drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on to find out the second the next part drops and in the meantime of course be excellent to each other I am Kirk Sheridan thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon